Firstly, I apologise for the crowding, but uh, we were unfortunately unable to get another venue. We did want to use the big hall down at the school, but unfortunately we were denied any access to that. Uh, I want to welcome you here tonight. I'm Mike Hatton. I'm the clown that's been writing all those emails and letters to you. <laughs> there is uh, a couple of things that I'd like to say. Firstly, I know that in some areas the emotions are running a bit high. But I would ask, particularly when we get to the Q&A session, that we treat everybody with respect and we have some decorum rather than any free-for-all. To give you some background on the Friends of Erskineville, it is purely a voluntary association. It's fully registered as a non-profit organisation. It is subject to independent audit of its proceedings and its finances. So all of you, I would hope before you leave here tonight, are going to join. Uh, it's only $20 a year. Up until this point in time, this entire exercise has been funded privately by some of us as individuals, but obviously we need some financial assistance to kick it along and keep it rolling. Tonight, we invited quite a number of people. The MP for the area where Ashmore actually sits is Christina Keneally, the former Premier of New South Wales. Parliament is sitting until 10 o'clock tonight, so she was not able to come. However, in the private member session tonight in Parliament, she will be raising the issue of the Ashmore estate in full support of what we're doing here tonight. Carl Tebbett also could not come because of the parliamentary situation. The Lord Mayor, Taylor Moore, declined on the basis that she had an alternative uh, engagement. I should imagine that's Parliament, and that comes back to the conflict of holding two positions. Um, <clears throat> Councillor Shane Mallard, the Liberal, said that he unfortunately had an alternative of engagement and that he would like to have the minutes of the meeting here tonight. Uh, independent councillor John McInerney said that he couldn't come because he had a different arrangement. Councillor Marcel Hawk, also an independent, is on extended sick leave and unfortunately could not be here. Independent councillors, Deputy Lord Mayor Robert Cock, Di Tornay and Philip Black did not bother to respond to the invitation at all. So we have a situation where we have a major issue in this area and not one independent of the group that controls the council could be bothered to come along and be present. And frankly, I think that stinks. Yep. I do want to welcome uh, Councillor Uh, Councillor Irene Dowden from the Greens, yeah. who is also here on behalf of the Greens. And I also want to welcome Labour Party Councillor Meredith Bergman. Yeah. And these people need to know that those two ladies are the strongest supporters that you have in this whole exercise at a council level. <laughs> We also have here tonight representatives from the Planning Department of the City of Sydney who will uh, do a brief presentation before we start the overall run through this evening. You've noticed on the uh, agenda paper that there is a series of resolutions to be discussed and to be voted on at the end of the Q&A session. Those if they are agreed and approved, we'll go forward to the Premier, to the Planning Minister and to the entire Council. 
What you need to understand in looking at all of this tonight is that the elephant in the room is Barry O'Farrell and Brad Hazard. Because in spite of all of the promises to say that Section 3A and state government control of planning was going to go, they in fact have reinstated it and they have control over this project. And at this point in time, they have not even accepted the nine-storey proposition that we're discussing here tonight and have made no commitment to accept it and I know are still being lobbied to take that site up to 19 storeys. <laughs> so we have a battle on our hands. Uh, we're going to need all the help we can get from these two lady councillors that are here this evening and it's going to mean that there's going to have to be solidarity and unity amongst the residents. Uh, we have drafted a submission which is on the website and also is here in written format tonight if you'd like to take one with you and every single person that you can find needs to lodge a submission about this plan because unless the people speak up, believe you me, they're going to walk all over us. Okay. Now we're going to start off briefly with a look at a timeline and then we will hand over to the council planning people for 10 minutes. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you, Mike. Uh, my name's Andrew Tudor. I'm a local resident. I live in the uh, Glow apartment building. And um, just in the Ashmore sort of subcommittee or part of uh, Friends of Erskineville, we uh, realise that there's a lot of confusion about where we are, where we've come from, and where we're headed, and what we need to do. And so to that end, I just thought very quickly, in a couple of minutes here, just try to explain through this timeline um, what the situation is at the moment. Um, back here, the land was rezoned in 1997. And uh, during this period here, mostly from 2003, there was some consultation with the community um, over this. And uh, this led to the 2006 Ashmore DCP, which uh, is gazetted and is the one that is sort of uh, in, in place right now. Um, and then uh, around the same time, some developments were made. The Glow Apartment Building, which is four to five storeys. Um, the motto, which um, is mostly five, there's a little bit of seven, and there's a lift overrun and comms tower at the top, which goes up to nine storeys. Uh, this was seven metres over controls at the time, uh, which were 14 metres up to about here. Um, so, printer was built, and um, so this kind of shows the economic viability of these kind of five storey uh, developments. Now then, in around this time, 2009, as the council starts investigating, uh, increasing the uh, densities, and at this time, um, you know, it's investigated perhaps how much they can sort of push it up. And uh, then, um, wait a while, and under the previous state government, um, the 19-storey plan, at the request of Goodmans and other developers, I suppose, um, came in and uh, 500 objections were lodged by locals on that issue. Now, um, then, um, of course, uh, you know, everyone objected and the council even thought that was so ridiculous too. And so now we are facing the amended version of this development, this, this development control program. Uh, it's a development control plan, five storeys. Now the development control plan allows for heights up to nine storeys. And you have uh, one week left in which to comment on that nine storey plan. Um, so that's where we've come from, where we're headed, and what we need to do uh, into the future. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you Andrew. Uh, my name also is Andrew, uh, Andrew Thomas from the City of Sydney, and I recognise many of your faces because I've been up here in front of you talking about the city's position on Ashmore and the planning controls for the Erskineville and uh, Alexandria areas before at numerous public meetings and consultations. 
I will mention um, just briefly that we do have here tonight a representative from the Lord Mayor's office, and that's Ben Peachy. He's a policy officer with Clover's office. Um, thank you for that introduction, uh, Andrew. It was a, a very good timeline, um, uh, giving a, a quick snapshot of the history of the development of the pain controls for Ashmore, um, which is kind of what I was going to do. So I am mindful of time, and I will try and keep it brief so you can, uh, well, so I can answer hopefully any of your questions, if that's okay. Yeah, we'll do that after the and, get, and, and so you can get on with the media, basically. All right, so um, what I'm going to talk about is the community consultation that we've undertaken to date, the planning studies, the proposed controls, where council, what the council's current supported position is for the planning controls for Ashmore, the plan making process and the um, planning assessment or development assessment process and how they're separate and the next steps on all of those. <coughs> so the uh, steps that Andrew outlined are, are fairly uh, accurate um, in that there's been a number of iterations of controls but a key thing that I'd like to highlight uh, in uh, that timeline was in around 2007 the state government actually directed all councils in New South Wales to meet housing and job targets. So each council was allocated a certain number of dwellings that they would have to show adequate progress towards providing in their planning controls. The city's uh, general strategic approach to uh, meeting those targets, particularly the housing targets, is to look at areas of brownfield, um, urban renewal areas such as Howard Park, Green Square um, and some of those older industrial areas and Ashmore Precinct as areas for medium to, uh, or well, in Ashmore's case, medium density development and around Green Square, high density development because of more uh, infrastructure that's available and they're all planned in that area. And each of those steps we carried out community consultation. Um, I'm sure there's some places here from the urban design study workshops that we conducted, um, which were probably at this venue. Um, the uh, urban design uh, studies were out for public comment and were altered um, in response to those. And that's essentially where uh, Council arrived at with our current position on planning controls, which is, yes, nine storeys, an increase from about five storeys, which it is now, to nine storeys. Um, for three buildings in the centre of the site around what will be uh, a new <coughs> park um, and uh, an increase in the overall density. Okay, so yes, it's nine storeys for three buildings and the rest, the predominant height around the rest of the precinct is about six storeys. Those buildings have been carefully studied, those future buildings have been carefully studied to make sure that they comply with appropriate amenity standards so that there's no uh, overshadowing or um, uh, there's adequate ventilation in the new homes, but also that there's no unacceptable overshadowing of existing homes. So across Henderson Road um, and the um, new developments to the south that actually face the new park road. So that's that summary there. So Go to the next slide. So the Ashmore DCP, why are we doing, why are we amending Ashmore DCP now when we've got the LEP effectively coming off exhibition and um, all the rest of that? The Ashmore DCP is being progressed because we have a number of developers who are interested in developing, providing new homes in the Ashmore precinct and they are interested in developing to the controls that council is currently supporting. So the LEP process, um, which involves the Department of Planning, uh, takes a much longer time, but the developers are ready to go now. Council's policy position is, is certainly been well researched and uh, put out there for community comment. So we're in a position to move that policy forward. And council, council has the uh, control of developing um, development control plans. We can make development control plans. Uh, we can't make 
local environment plans or LEPs without the state government also um, contributing. Uh, that, that's absolutely right, Mark. That's absolutely right. Well, Sorry, and people, a lot of people oppose the I? LEP, that's why it hasn't been considered. Okay, and I'll, okay. I'll, 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 I'll touch on. Can we just do this in silence until we get to the end of this presentation? Yeah. Then we'll do the next presentation, then we can have the open forum. Thank you. Okay, but can you then not whisper again? Anything that is not understood at the back so that's not trigger, I right think, the interaction. What, what did you say, Mark, to me just then? That was the question, I think. Oh, the, the state government has yet to agree, as I said earlier, has yet to agree to the nine level plan. That's okay. So, um, the council came to the position of the nine stories. We put that to the Department of Planning, and in response to approaches from Goodman, uh, a, a, a landowner within the Ashmore Precinct, uh, the the department then directed council to exhibit a plan uh, showing buildings up to 19 storeys on the land owned by Goodman. So that's a direction from state government. We, we had to comply with that direction. In response to that public exhibition process, we received 510 submissions. We received uh, just over a thousand submissions for the whole of the plan, for the whole of the, uh, of the Sydney LGA, so that's the CBD, Paddington, the whole lot, and just over half were about the 19 storey buildings proposed on the Goodman sites in the Ashmore Precinct. Okay? So that, you're absolutely right, Mike, there, it is a, a, a key concern of Council. Um, we reviewed uh, that 19 storey proposal, did a number of studies that are listed there, uh, key concerns are how we manage the stormwater and, and local flooding, how we manage traffic, um, and what are the impacts from overshadow and out of the shadowing and amenity for not only the incoming residents but the existing residents. Now, council staff uh, did a technical assessment and found that we couldn't support those 19 stories, and in fact, nine stories was appropriate. Okay, so we didn't meet them halfway, we, we stuck with our nine story recommendation. Now, um, that uh, was a, such a concern to council, the Lord Mayor put a minute to council towards the end of last year, uh, following our technical assessment and said, um, nine stories is our, our limit, we don't accept the 19 story proposal, and um, that was put to council and was unanimously endorsed at that meeting. We also wrote back to, well, the Lord Mayor then wrote back to the Planning Minister and restated that position. Also wrote back to uh, the landowner and the Department of Planning. So that our position has been quite clear uh, and that's our intention when we report back to um, Council on the overall exhibition of the city plan. Okay. <coughs> So that's a brief summary of the planning controls for the Ashmore Precinct. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that's well understood. I suppose the point there to highlight is the maximum floor space ratio, which is a, uh, a density measure, in other words, how much building space you can get on a lot. And um, the number of dwellings is an approximation of the whole of the Ashmore Precinct when it is fully developed. Okay. That includes the existing developments, such as motto. <coughs> so um, I'm coming to the end now. So the next step really for, for us as staff is to report back to the LEP. And um, it's what we call a post-exhibition report. So we report on all the issues that were raised in submissions. Um, but I'll emphasize this again, and that's Mike's point. The state government has the final say on the LEP. We report it up to council. They make a, a, a decision to refer that then to the department and, and the minister. Then the minister makes the final decision. The development control plan is a policy that is owned and can be progressed by council. That exhibition finishes at the end of this month um, and we're taking submissions up, up to that point. There is also a development application in at council for uh, the Layton's block, which is in the northwest corner, uh, tucked up right in behind the school and the railway line, for a scheme that largely complies, largely complies with 
the draft controls that Council has supported to date. Okay, so hopefully that explains those three processes. Um, and that's it. Great. Would some of you people at the back there like to move across here a bit? Rather than be crowded up in the door? Okay. What we're going to do now...